Good afternoon, everybody. It's just gone 12 here in Melbourne. Welcome back to another another oil filtration webinar. So my name is Paul Marley, Technical Training Manager from HIDAC in Melbourne. So it's a pleasure to have you back with us. I'm not going to muck about. I'm going to just go straight to the presentation and I'll introduce the subject there. So we are up to episode seven. So this is called Boost Filtration. Again, welcome. It's great to have you with us again. Thanks for those that are turning up uh, every webinar we do. It's, that's very encouraging to see. And I, I trust you're getting some good information out of these webinars. So uh, just again, this series that we're doing on oil filtration, uh, there's 11 in the series. We're up to episode seven already. So seven is on boost filtration. Okay, so what is boost filtration? Well, boost filtration is something I, I need to describe in a little bit of detail. So it is part of a closed loop system. Now, the systems that we've been talking about in the previous webinars have all been open loop system. So the characteristics of an open loop system are that you are going to be drawing oil from a reservoir and you're going to be sending it via your pump through a filter into your system out of your system, potentially through another filter and back to the tank. So it's open loop because there's a disconnect between the outlet and the inlet. Okay, so that is an open loop system. And again, there's one here. Okay, boost filtration is part of a closed loop system. So a closed loop system is a little bit more complicated. This is the schematic symbol for a closed loop pump and motor. So I form the opinion that this is probably a bit high tech for some of the people listening in. So I've, I'm simplifying what this is about. So follow along. The applications for these closed loop systems are, for example, with the wheel drive, for example, on this loader. So the wheels are driven by hydraulic motors. So we are driving the hydraulic motors to drive the vehicle. Okay, so with a closed loop system, what we're going to have is an engine or a drive motor, if it's industrial, and that's going to be driving a pump. Then the pump is ultimately going to be driving a hydraulic motor. Motor then will be driving the wheels. So that's how we get our power transmitted. And the fact that it's a closed loop system by name is because it's a closed loop by application. So what we're going to do is have a pump that will usually be able to pump in one of two directions. You pump into the motor that way to take the wheel in one direction and into the motor that way to drive the wheel in the other direction. This is a closed loop. So it's very different to an open loop. Okay, so one of the characteristics about a system like this is that the pump and the motor both have leakage, and they have leakage because the, it's, it's a necessary part of lubrication. So what's going to happen then is when you have leakage in your system, you are going to be losing oil out of your loop. So then if you're pumping oil out of your pump into the motor, what comes back out of the motor will be less than what you've put in the motor and so on. So ultimately, you're going to starve the pump. So these systems need to be boosted by another supply of fluid to keep the loop pressurized at all times, especially in the suction side. So for that reason, there's a boost pump fitted, often called a charge pump as well. But that pump draws oil from a reservoir and through a series of check valves will send oil into the lowest pressure side of the loop where that demand is for supplementing losses. Okay, so again, we can drive forward with a high pressure line being red. We can drive clockwise and the flow is moving in the direction of the arrows. With a change of direction, we are going to send the oil the other way and that will change the direction of the uh, drive wheels. So that's a closed loop system. Okay. Now, it's very important to understand with the closed loop system then the need for cleanliness because if you, for example, had oil going around this system in a closed loop, if you had a contaminant, then it is going to be damaging to the motor. That will cause potential more contamination 
and then that sends more contamination into the pump and that will damage the pump and send even more contamination to the motor so you can see these systems need filtration because you really have to filter otherwise you're just using that same contaminant around and around and around and your oil turns into sandpaper essentially okay now one of the things though about these systems is that it's very difficult to filter in the loop you can't filter in the loop because you are going to send oil in one of two directions so a filter can only filter in one direction unless you have some elaborate valving or something around it but another challenge with the loop is there's very high pressures and shocks and there's a very dynamic system so filtration in the loop is really not possible for those two reasons so then you have two options so the options are going to be that you are using your boost system to give you clean oil by supplying filtration in the suction side of your boost pump okay again it's basically standard suction filtration or after the pump you have a filter in there before it goes into your loop and that is ultimately going to be your typical delivery boost filtration so either or usually one of the two is what's going to be used so that's what boost filtration is so getting back to the schematic here so this is then the loop in a full schematic so we have the pump and that uh, heavy line is is our loop and that's driving the motor now the rest of the schematic is how it does what it does that's where the magic happens but what i'd like to point out in this point is that we have our boost pump over here and the filter for the boost pump is over here so you can see that we draw through the boost pump filter the oil and then send it across our pump and into the loop now that system pressure is going to be regulated by a valve in here and typically that is going to be around about the 30 bar mark on on your typical transmission closed loop transmission pump okay so then what we're talking about isn't high pressure but we are certainly talking about high pressure with regards to some of the filter options that we could use in there but i will say this is a fixed displacement pump and it's going to be a constant flow and it's going to be a constant pressure okay so filtration is pretty easy to take care of there and it doesn't need to be a very big filter so typically your boost pump is around about 20% of your main system flow okay so it's um it's a, it's a smaller filter that's required so that's what boost filtration is now i just want to show you some of the some photos of some applications to so you can identify what a boost filter looks like so this is a closed loop transmission pump here so in this case you can see the spin on filter on the side that is in fact our boost filter here okay so it's an intrinsic part of the transmission it's not always but certainly it is an option and that is one of the places it can be fitted okay now as i said um, the the filter itself is often a spin-on but a typical spin-on element that we use in return filtration will not do because they are not rated to the pressure rating so if you're familiar with the spin-on filter have a look at the construction of this guy so this is a very thick material and it is in fact very thick material all the way around so it's not a typical spin-on filter but it is a spin-on filter it's just a specialized one okay so that's onboard filtration i've got a photograph here of offboard so this is the transmission pump here and we've got in this case a feed the charge pump the boost pump is in here typically and that's sending oil out of here into the boost filter over here and then back into the transmission so uh that's that's the offboard option and in this case um it is of course using another spin on okay there's one more thing i'd like to cover this is a very interesting filter so this is return line and suction boost filtration so i just want to talk about that quickly so something like that loader if i go back two slides we have the wheel drive and that's going to be 
with our closed loop transmission. But then we have the articulation of the bucket and the lift and the steering and everything like that. So they're going to be an open loop system. So very commonly, these have multiple systems in them. And that's why there's multiple pumps. Okay, so the transmission, if it's done in a mobile application, you're going to see that we have an open loop system and a closed loop system. So typically, the open loop system will have pressure filtration and return filtration. And typically, your closed loop transmission will have potentially suction filtration or boost delivery filtration. Okay, so this suction boost filter is a combination of both this one and this one. And it's a pretty, pretty tricky thing. So just like to highlight what this is about here. So this is the um, RKM series of filters from HIDAC. This is a return line filter. And you can see here in the open loop system, we have delivery into our system and then return back to tank. So the oil is filtered um, and like in the previous filters that we've been discussing in our webinars, we, of course, have a bypass valve uh, if the filter is clogged. So that gets our oil back to tank, but typically, naturally, we are filtering. Now, what this also has is this valve here, which is a back pressure valve. So you have to overcome a certain pressure to get the oil back to tank. And it's not a high pressure, but it leaves you with a, a positive pressure in the return line after it's been filtered. That is then fed into your charge pump, and then that replenishes the circuit. Now, the advantages of this very tricky idea is that you can get then your charge pump to have a positive head, positive net suction head. So you are actually charging your suction of your charge pump, which aids in the charge pump's application. But also the fluid that you're putting into your closed loop system has already been filtered and warmed because it's been pumped through a system. So it's improved viscosity, improved pressure, and improved cleanliness. So there's multiple advantages to this one. Now, if you then have the possibility of this cavitating because you don't have enough flow coming through your system, this also has this valve three, which is anti an anti-cavitation valve, which sends oil into your charge system without being filtered, but oil will always be available to the charge pump. Okay, so here's some cutaways of that filter and how it does its magic. We have the inlet going through here. Typical HIDAC filtration, we are filtering from outside to inside. So the clean oil then is directed back to tank through our back pressure valve and down to tank. But then that oil is available also to go out an outlet here to the suction line of your charge pump. And again, if you then have the, um, the rare case where you might have uh, a need uh, for even more oil than the return line of the open loop system is providing, then this can draw oil back through the outlet of the filter or back through the filter into the charge head. Okay, so ultimately then these filters have all sorts of uh, options, uh, but it's an interesting filter. So again, V1 is our back pressure valve, V2 is our bypass, V3 is our anti-cavitation valve, VA is our filter clogging indicator, and we also have a secondary filter in here as a suction filter as well, and two outlets as shown over here. So I think it's a bit of a tricky filter myself. Um, you know, it's quite innovative. Uh, certainly, it, it changes what a typical return line filter is. And it is the only return line filter in our range that actually has outlets for the filtered oil to not return to tank. Okay, so um, I've got a poll question there set up. I wonder if this is new to you. Were you aware of return and boost filtration before this webinar? Okay, so if you can go to the poll and, and put that in, I'd be interested to know if you've seen this one before. It uh, hides in our catalogue, of course, but I wonder if you've seen it. Before we get there, please um, register for our upcoming webinars. And uh, again, we have uh, podcasts and other webinars that are on YouTube, and please engage with us in social media as well. Okay, so I'm going to go back and uh, stop my sharing.
So thank you for your questions and thank you for joining us. We've got the poll here. So let's have a look at that. Were you aware of return boost filtration before this webinar? 53% um, have said yes, and the rest have said no. So pretty even, pretty even. Um, so hopefully those that have said no, you've learned something today. <laughs> And for those that have said, yes, you may have been aware of it, um, but hopefully I've helped you understand where it's fitted in the system. Okay, so um, ladies and gentlemen, with regards to our webinars, we've got four more to go. Um, so the next one is on offline filtration. And again, that's in about two weeks time. So thank you again for joining us today. Thank you for engaging with us with our webinars. We hope you find them beneficial. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you down the track. Cheers.